Okay, well, let's pray together. <clears throat> Our Father, we pray this morning, even as we begin our 24th year of ministry. May we be green with a great sense of challenge in our heart to grow. If we don't grow, if we don't aspire to grow, then the danger of backsliding is so real. The danger of drifting can happen. And we pray that we will hold fast to what we have and to Make this year truly count for our life, for our faith, for the church, for the glory of the Lord's name. We pray that you would bless us as we take time to conclude the book of Ephesians. May we be challenged to be fellow workers of the Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, now we go to Ephesians chapter 6, the last part of it. Now, who was the one who actually brought this letter to the Ephesians? Okay, we've heard of Timothy, we've heard of Titus, right? But this person is not <coughs> uh, mentioned among people like Timothy or Titus, but nonetheless, <coughs> a very significant servant of the Lord. Okay, now let's take a look at this. Ephesians chapter 6 and we read how Paul concludes this part of it and he says he, he asked the people to pray for him and this we must as a church pray for the servants of God that is our part at the basic level pray for the servants of God okay and this is verse 18 praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and he asked him to, to pray, be watchful. <clears throat> Interesting. The word watchful, right, and perseverance is the idea of you have to be awake. You have to be alert. You have to be alive. There's intensity in prayer. It is never mouthing words. I'm so tired. I just conclude the day. I just got to say a quick prayer before I sleep. That is not prayer. Will those prayers be even considered? Look what prayer is. There is a great sense of alertness, watchfulness, perseverance for the saints, for the people of God. Look at that. Verse 19, praying for those who are uh, believers, that they will be faithful, that they will hold fast, right? So this is important. Pray for each other. Pray for the church at, at, at large. Verse 19, and for me. This is a reference to Paul. And then he says, pray that utterance may be given. And I open my mouth boldly. Make known the mystery of the gospel. We don't take this for granted. We don't take the preaching of the Lord's word for granted. The challenge is to pray for the servants of God. That they may speak skillfully and communicate the gospel message. That's uh, a, a great challenge. Verse 20, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. And that's how Paul saw himself. Yes, he was incarcerated, but you know what? He saw himself wherever he is as an ambassador for Christ. That's his faith. Now we see a glimpse of his faith through what he does, what he, how he's doing things. That's how we can actually see a person's faith. What do you look for? Look at it. Look at his heart. Look at his spirit. Even though he was in a very difficult circumstance. Who wants to be in, incarcerated? Nobody. Who wants to suffer like that? Nobody. And yet, in the midst of suffering, you know what? 
I, he sees himself as an ambassador. Do we see, how do we see ourselves? Do we see ourselves as an ambassador for the Lord? This is the kingdom of God. We represent the kingdom of God. Or are we so earthbound, so worldly, that we cannot differentiate? You see, this is how Paul uh, you know, looks at himself, and this is how he lived. <clears throat> now, verse 21. But that you may also know uh, my affairs and how I am doing. You see, this is special. He keeps in touch. Right? He keeps in touch. This is how you build a great sense of rapport and uh, with each other, you keep in touch. Right? As the part, he writes to them, like, this is why I write the pastoral letter every week to keep in touch, to share with you my meditations, to share with you the thoughts that are there, to share with you my heart's burden. Keep in touch. And of course, it's from the Lord's word and that you may know how things are. Keep in touch. Right? And so, Tychicus, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, will make all things known to you. Now, here we have a mention of this person called Tychicus. Right? So there are others. It wasn't just Paul topping it out on him by himself. In the work of the Lord to grow, to, to really be strengthened further, we need others. It's not about available. First, where, are you able to give the time, the energy, basic time, energy, effort? If you can't even spare those things, forget it. See, so we've, we've got time for this, we've got time for that, we've got time for the other thing. But no time when it comes to the Lord's work. That's the problem. We're happy with, okay, I come to church already. I've done my part. I've given my tithe. I serve here and there on weekends, if I am even serving. And then I'm happy. You know what? I've done my part for the church. Have we really? How much of the church has grown because we are part of it? Because it's a direct result of the Lord blessing in and through you. The idea of the church to a lot of people is what I can take. I feel I belong. Right? Might as well join a social club because you get the same thing. What you want to take and you feel you belong. Join the chess club. Same thing, isn't it? Is that what the church is? What you can take? I can take this, I can have this, I can have this, I can have this, gimme, gimme, gimme. What can I get out of it? Can we miss the point of the church? The church is not confined to a physical building. Now, Paul concludes on commending, here is a fellow servant of the Lord. He is an example. Look what he says. He tells him a beloved brother. <clears throat> In the book of Acts, the origin of this person is traced to Asia Minor. He could be Gentile. Tychicus doesn't sound very Jewish. To call a brother, him a fellow brother, a, a beloved, not fellow, beloved brother. This is who he is. It's not just, here is another church member. This one is a beloved brother. Look at the bond, look at the rapport, look at the relationship that has been built over the years. It's a sense of love, respect and regard for each other. Well, to this one, definitely, look, look how, how he is later on. We will take a look at this. Right? 
This Paul never uses flattery. He will say it as it is. If it's no good, he will tell you. If it's wrong, he will rebuke you. This is Paul. He will never use just pretty words, nice words to win people's. But when Paul commands, we should take note. This one is a beloved brother. He has all the marks of one who is truly beloved. Right? What did Paul love about this person? Well, look at this. He is a faithful person. The word faithful is a very interesting word. It literally has the word faith in it. Without faith, you cannot be faithful. This one is faithful. He can be counted on. He is trustworthy. He is reliable. You can depend on him. Faithful. Not many are faithful. Faithless, too many. Faithful, this one is faithful. And he is a faithful minister. The word minister is a very, very humble word. Is that of one who just is like waiter? <clears throat> serving, him, serving humbly. And he does not mind to be that, does humble things. You know what his, his work is? That is featured. Paul can send him anywhere. And he will go. Go to Ephesus, he will go. Go to uh, to the Colossians. He's also sent to the Colossians. He will go. Send me. And he will faithfully do it. Loyal, faithful. What is his work? He carries the letter that Paul brings. That is of Paul. And he faithfully ministers to the church with what Paul has written. This is the person who brought the letter. Because Paul was not there in person. Okay? You mustn't think that it's like the letter just give you and then just, who is the person who read the letter? Him. And Paul is not just going to give it to anyone to read his letter because you can read it wrong. Right? You can take the same letter and don't share the same spirit of faith and you read it. Not the same. You must know the person. You must believe what the person also believes. He knows Paul. He knows his emphasis. He knows his heart. He knows his spirit. And he will teach and minister through what Paul has written to the church. This is Thychicus. Outstanding. Can we be a Thychicus? Right? That means his knowledge is there too. <clears throat> All right? uh, this is important. Okay? There are faithful ministers. This one is one faithful servant of the Lord over here. Okay? A beloved brother, faithful minister, and we have this reference in the Lord. And it's always in the Lord. He's not doing it in his own strength. He's not doing it in his own. He does it. He very much in the Lord. Okay, now let's take a look at this. Tychicus is mentioned <clears throat> not only in Ephesus, Colossians he's mentioned. Take a look at this. Okay, might as well turn to the book of Colossians because we will be looking at this. Colossians chapter 4, and verse 7, <clears throat> and we see he is, uh, yeah, we, we, we read. Similar, Tychicus, a beloved brother, faithful minister. See, consistent, not once in a while. Today call you faithful, tomorrow where are you? You are consistent. It has characterized you, fellow servant in the Lord, and will tell you all the news about me. 
I'm sending you, I'm sending him to you for this very purpose. He may know your circumstance and comfort your hearts. Now, that is a special uh, work and ministry that Tychicus is able to do, comfort people's hearts, right? Which is really wonderful. Okay, now, 2 Timothy. <clears throat> He's mentioned there too. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and then verse 12. Okay, the whole group of them, that Paul's team of servants of God, he has a team. So, uh, and Luke is part of that team. Verse 11, Mark, he's requested, Mark, bring him. He's useful for ministry. That is so good to be useful for the Lord. Right? Bring him. And Paul is not going to just anyone will do this one is really useful his heart his spirit his faith right if you are not useful you are dead weight you're right that is it's a challenging thing over in uh, go, go, going to india in october not everyone can come can i go because i want to have a look see look see no you cannot you have to be useful for ministry. If you want to have, uh, can I let, yeah, go for camps. Not for missions work. Missions work is serious stuff. First, you've got to survive it. Useful for ministry. How useful are we for ministry? So these are people that are mentioned over here, right? Okay, Titus. He's also mentioned in Titus, chapter 3, and then verse 12. <clears throat> when I send Artemis to you, or Thychicus, be diligent to come to me. Right? I have decided to spend... See, he is... Can I, can I send you? Maybe I will send you. He is not a Paul you promised to send me. I, I like his spirit. It's just really, it's not about him. It's about the work of the Lord. If Paul was to send me, I will go. If Paul was to send someone else, that's unhappy too. You know them people, why, why didn't you send me? Why didn't you choose me? Why, why, why did you not choose me? You reject me, is it? What's wrong with you? It's not about you. Uh, you. Right? Oh, you chose me because I am good. See, it's, you keep thinking about yourself. It doesn't matter. The right heart, right spirit, right mind, ready all the time. They are ready. And Paul, if he was to send me, I will be there, useful there. But if I'm to remain here, I will be useful here. Remain here. That is a heart of a servant of the Lord. Right? That is, is a very, very special spirit that is there. This is why Paul calls him truly a beloved brother. Right? Let's go back to Ephesians. Okay? And so, uh, Paul sending Tychicus was one to personally keep in touch, close touch with the brethren in Ephesus. And he's already mentioned that. Right? And this is so important to keep in touch. Make the effort to keep in touch. Have we kept in touch in our 23rd year? We keep in touch with each other. In our 24th year, do we keep, are we going to keep in touch or we see each other? Okay, I'll see you on Sunday, that's it. <clears throat> that keeping in touch. We really keep in touch because we are brethren. Keep in touch with a person like Paul and your faith will grow. Of course. Whatever he has will rub onto you. Whoever he is will rub onto you. Right? You ask questions, he will enlighten you. This is why keeping in touch is so important. That this is one person that has opened himself. Come on, I'm, I'm, I want to share with you. I want to keep in touch with you. 
Does it work the other way around? Do you want to keep in touch? And not everyone wants to keep in touch. They want to a distance. Hi. Hi. That's it. Yeah, they're happy with highs and bys. Just in case you know them a little bit deeper. Just in case you see through the facade. And, and you know what's the true spiritual state of this person. Don't, just, don't, don't, don't keep in touch. Sure, this is why not everybody keeps in touch with me too. I understand that because I will call it as it is. Right? You ask me, I will tell you. Right? You tell me this, I will affirm it for you. Wow, okay, I don't want. I, I'd rather not know. That doesn't help either. Right? Look at this keeping in touch part of it. This is why effort has been made. He sends personal. Look how much effort is poured out. <clears throat> One, Tychicus would keep in touch on behalf of Paul. That is special. He's, this is a personal touch. He doesn't just send them a letter. He sends a fellow brother. I can't be there. I'm going to send someone else that represents my heart, my spirit. That is really special. Okay? And then he uh, ministers and he is there sent. Okay? Now, we read in verse 22. <clears throat> verse 22. Whom I have sent to you for this very purpose. Now, this is very similar to Colossians. That you may know our affairs. Again, that you may know. Do we want to know? This is what the bulletin is for. That you may know. Right? That you may not be ignorant. Do we know the affairs of the church? That we know what's happening all the time. Right? So when you know, we have different things that come up, made known to you. Right? We have an ACM coming up, made known to you. Right? It is for members only, made known to you. You cannot say you do not know. Oh, I didn't know it's for members only. Then you have obviously not been keeping in touch. All this time. Make no, make no, make no, make no. But I didn't know. But I didn't know when Christmas is. I didn't know we had Easter. I didn't even know there was a church anniversary. Right? Make known that you may know. Good question. What do you know? See, are we part of the church? Are we not part of the church? Part of the church, I want to know. I want to be informed. I want to be in touch. I want to know. Right? God's plan of salvation is never just a person. He speaks always of a people of God. A people. He is making a people. Now, I want to be on my own. What, kind of, what is a people on your own? You know, I am one people. What is that? It's always a group, a people, a holy priesthood. Right? That is always been in God's heart, in God's plan. He makes alive, becomes part of. Right? Not, okay, I'm going to do my own thing here. I'm going to think my own thoughts here. I'm going to just uh, do my own way. That is not a people. So if we read Ephesians carefully, it reads, one, Paul teaches. Two, he practices. He doesn't just teach and then he doesn't practice. He teach them to love. He teach them to walk worthy. He teach them, wow, well, you, you see this very, very strongly in his own life. Right? So he, he says all these things and he doesn't keep in touch. That would be a big backfire. Right? So he keeps in touch. 
that He may comfort your hearts. And that is His goal. He knows that there are people who are discouraged. They are discouraged because they are so overwhelmed in their sins. They are discouraged because perhaps they are unwell. There are many things that can bring discouragement to the heart. And so he sends Thykikis. And he has a very special area of ministry and he brings comfort to the heart. Right? Okay? And, and this is what Paul says. How does, how does one bring comfort to the heart? Now, we read this in 2 Corinthians. <clears throat> how Paul does it. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Okay. And this is a very special ministry, actually. Blessed is the servant of God who has this. Right? Um, especially for funeral ministries, I must say. There are people who just know how to bring a word of comfort to the heart. That is a very special gift. Now, I've seen people that don't know how to bring a word of comfort too. In the moment of grieving, they say all the wrong things. That is also true and uncalled for and sad. And so we don't take this for granted. Look how Paul does it. Okay? And he shares with people in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3, he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. That's how it is. And times, sometimes God uses our tribulation for the good. Our trials, you know, we are in great discomfort. And then we seek the God of all comfort. We plead His mercies and we receive a very special comfort from God. That comfort is never meant to be just for the moment. you can become a comforter to those maybe going through similar or maybe experiencing uh, similar things, become a comfort. Now, I, um, in the anniversary dinner, I uh, introduced Pastor Charlie to one of the person that comes to our worship. His name is Jason. And he has been, he's battling fourth stage cancer. Very, very weak. He wasn't sure whether he could make it. He was just saying, he rested up a few days just to attend that one evening. He was so excited to come. He has benefited much from, from uh, you know, worshipping with us. He says, for the first time, now he's been to churches, but never teach him to read the scriptures. See, for the first time, I'm reading the Lord's Word. And it just brought so much comfort to my heart. It's brought me so much peace. There's this closeness with God I cannot explain. And He sits at the back. So, it's very, very painful just to stand up. Painful just to stand up. So, I... I, 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 I Pastor Charlie and I went to, to see him and, and introduced him. And so that was very interesting. He said, well, I was watching. And the pastor said to him, I'm also a cancer survivor. I'm also battling cancer. He stood up and hugged him. <sighs> Just those words. I am also. He just... 
you know, somebody understands what I've gone through. Somebody understands the tribulation that I'm experiencing. That is the comfort. Now you could be going through your own pain, but you don't know how the Spirit of God worked. You don't know how, to, how that works to become a comfort, a God of all comfort. Paul does. And that becomes an area of ministry. That which is very, very special. I thought, wow, that is a special, very special. And so he said, can I meet with you? On Sunday, the following, met with him. Encouraged him further. And so, you know, keep in touch with him. Can we comfort, bring comfort? There are people who are coming. You're able to minister a word of comfort. Now, maybe not to Jason, because you may not be able to. But others... The God of all comfort, because of your faith in God, you were able to find that comfort, the comfort you receive. Now, look at this. Comfort us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort. In other words, with the same comfort which, which we ourselves, right, are comforted by God. At the end, it is God work in and out through this person. Now, Thychicus had that ministry. Now, that is special. That is really special. You want to talk about growth? This is growth. Growth is never mere, well, I, I know some more knowledge. It is seen in real life, real ministry. Right? He is truly useful for ministry. A special blessing to hearts. Okay, well, this is Thychicus, and we note him there. Now, go back to Ephesians 6, and we look at Paul's final greetings to the church. <clears throat> it is really worth noting. I like how he, he doesn't just sign off without thinking. There are people who just sign off. I wish you. But not Paul. Remember, he is sending from prison, every word counts. Okay, and so he says uh, to the people there, and, and I like, if we read this very carefully, peace to the brethren and love, with, and love with faith from God, the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with you all, those who love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Now, these may be just hey, very, very short words. But you look at what he has written, it, it says a lot. It tells me a lot. One, it tells me a lot about his heart. He really has a heart of a good shepherd. You see, how we communicate reflects our heart. It really reflects... His final greetings reflect his pastoral heart. His heart, his... What does he want? He's even at the very end. This is the heart of a good shepherd. To impart rich spiritual truths. To the very end, he would be concerned for their spiritual well-being. To the very end, he'll be praying for them. That's what a shepherd is. That's what a, a, a servant of God is. Right? If you want to look at it very carefully, this is what parenting is too. You want to learn good parenting, learn shepherding. This is uh, the person that wrote the book, Shepherd a Child's Heart. And he's right. He has literally taken that which is pastoral skills and employed it into parenting skills. Now that's what parenting should be, should be. Shepherding work. You impart spiritual truths. You are concerned not just for the physical well-being, but the spiritual well-being. 
of your child. You consciously pray for them. That's, that's very, very special. So I, I learned a lot of parenting by studying Paul's letter. Not only pastoral, but parenting too. Both begins with P. Right? Okay, if we look at it very carefully. So it's not just, hey, but I'm not a pastor. If you are entrusted with anything, anyone to look over, these skills would benefit you immensely. Okay, let's take a look at this. And so he is, look how he begins his epistle. He began, so I recall Ephesians 1, 2, and then 6, 23, he begins. Remember how he begins and how he ends. Begin, very conscious of God. The Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, conscious of God's blessings needed in life, right? Uh, peace, love, faith, uh, with faith from God. Remember? Look at, right? <clears throat> this one, Ephesians 1, it says, Grace to you, peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 verse 2, and then 6 verse 23. Peace to the brethren, love with faith from God. Wow, different blessings here. But the idea of needing the Lord's blessings, conscious. The consciousness of God the Father. The consciousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. I like His consciousness. See, this is how a person who is able to grow much, he is so conscious of the Lord in his life. He doesn't just begin, he ends. Start to end conscious of God. Conscious we need His blessings. Conscious the Father. Conscious the Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> right? And they are very, very special blessings that He is praying for them. One is peace. That you will have peace with God. And in a world that is so filled with trouble, this is, is really lacking peace. Very hard to work if you have no peace in your heart. Very hard to live if you have no peace. You're constantly worrying, constantly troubled, constantly caught up with, with problems. No peace. This is his gift of peace. May God's peace be given to you. A very special blessing that we don't take for granted is God's peace. Another special blessing is love. And so he says, and love with faith. Now that's an interesting phrase. With faith. How can we receive this gift of peace and this gift of love with faith? If you doubt it, it is not yours. How do you receive it? With faith in your heart. You develop this faith, it will affect this love. You strengthen this faith, the stronger this love is. You neglect your faith, it will affect that too. How did the Ephesians church remember what Jesus said? You have left your first love. Does that affect their faith? Yes. It will affect their faith. It reveals the state of their faith. Not good at all. Right? And so it was very, very serious when Jesus had to address them the way he did. This is why we pray, Lord, this gift, and it is a special blessing. Love. Faith. Develop this faith. Strengthen this faith. Cultivate this faith. Nurture this faith. And it will affect this love. This fruit of love will be seen. This fruit of love will shine. Okay, so this is the very small phrase, but very important, with faith. Okay, it just tells us how to receive it. Now, this is <clears throat> really interesting. 
because he distinguishes here between this is already wonderful right uh, uh, a peace of love now verse 24 grace be with all those now this is interesting grace there are many many aspects there is grace for salvation this is truly saved by grace you really don't deserve it right and yet the lord saved you made you alive that is really out of grace now there is grace for spiritual gifts for ministry that is also out of grace given by the grace of god now this one falls under the category of very special grace it's not general because it is only for those who love our lord jesus christ in sincerity this grace whatever it is it is it, paul understands this because when he was going through so much affliction the lord jesus said to him my grace is sufficient for you what is this special grace it is for those who loves the lord jesus christ in sincerity and the word sincerity in sincerity is not just about being sincere about it as a feeling it isn't okay none of this is about feelings by the way so i feel loving i feel that i love the lord i don't feel like it i feel it's nothing to do with feelings okay this word in sincerity literally means an unceasing and undying love heart is not something that is of a feeling it's conscious it's determined is no matter what i will love the lord to the death this special grace is given to those who love the lord like this this is what the book of revelation said you in the i will deliver you save you from the hour of trial those who love him for those who love him right we read in in corinthians i have not seen not the ears heard the things that god has prepared for those who love him for those who love him only for those who love him okay to those who don't love him sorry general grace by grace you are saved if you are saved this one knowledge special knowledge of god you just is a gift is given this grace to those who love him all things will work together for the good to those who love him okay a lot of people like that verse oh all, all things will work together for the good yes 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 but to those who love him are you one of those who love him with an unceasing and an undying love that is a very special blessing a special blessing of grace this comes under another category so we must know the blessings of god ah, not just all over the place he's already said ephesians 1 we are blessed in every spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in christ sure yes general we are heirs we are you know forgiven of our sins we are made children of god they are wonderful right the power of god given to us and and so and so forth and then he tells them further is that it no there is a love that you want to deepen why because he knows this is very special reserved for those who love him okay this is james 2 5 to those who love him james paul they teach similar all of it similar so if you piece them together will god show special grace in your time of trial and tribulation well to those who love him this grace is extended that's what god the lord said to the apostle paul my grace 
is sufficient for you. There is a wealth of grace that you have not known yet. And Paul understood that. And that grace truly was sufficient for Paul. He ministered to his last breath with strength, with vigor, with enlightenment. He did not just fade into the darkness and just die. He was a bright light to the end. Okay, That's, that is a challenge. Okay, now that we read the, the book of Ephesians, could review the whole thing again. Now, what did Paul write? What often he write re reflects the person. It reflects his heart. Look beyond the words. It reflects his spirit. Reflects his mind. This is actually the pattern of growth we are talking about. Right? There is a pattern. Paul says he is that pattern. This is 1 Timothy. That I have become a pattern. Study this pattern. What is my mind like? Is it carnal or spiritual? Carnal, watch, death. Develop the mind. Develop your heart. Where is my heart? You cannot serve two masters. Where's the treasure? If my treasures are on earth, I can never... My, my heart will always be earthbound. Where are the treasures? Where your treasures are, there your heart will be there too. Obviously, the heart follows whatever the, your treasures are. If your treasures are in heaven, if I am redeemed, if, if, if God has made me alive, raised me up, then that mind, we set our mind on the things above. The things that are of God. Right? Heart. Now, spirit. What spirit do we have? Is it the spirit of faith that we have? Not just faith as in objective faith. Okay, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and, and that's my faith. I was baptized and, you know, I have a baptism here and I go to... That is, you are telling me objective stuff. Spirit of faith is what we see in the life of a person. You see it in the life of people like Paul. People like Thychicus. You look at that, that is faith. Look at his heart. He's inclined to pray. Look at his heart. He's inclined to care for people. That is called the spirit of faith. You, it's not about being a pastor. You either have the spirit of faith or you do not. If it is in you, it is in you. You can't fake it. You can't. It's inside you. The heart will care. The heart is inclined to pray. The heart is inclined to the Lord's Word. Watch. You make yourself read the Lord's Word. Oh, oh God, I must read. Oh, I, oh, oh, yeah, I feel guilty. of the It's torturous, right? Very hard. But there's no love for the Lord. Very hard. Oh, but I, I've got no time. I've got to study. I've got to do assignment. I've got to do this. Sure. You say all that. It just tells you where you really are. where it really is. It is spirit of faith. It's there. It's inside you. It is developed. This is in you. You develop it. Right? Made alive. Now, what am I going to do with my life? What shall I do with my life? Shall I go back to the world? Then I'll be caught up with the world again. What for? I justify myself? What is the fruit as a result? Nothing but shame. Truly, at the end, it is shame. You look back, what have I done? What have I really done? Celebrate another anniversary. How much of that anniversary celebration can I say, you know what, I can really celebrate as a proud member of the body of Christ, as a proud member as of a member of Bethel, not another name. Being a name on the list of membership 
is not something that anyone is hard up for. You know what? You can look at it and say, well, thank God for His grace. I thank Christ Jesus who has enabled me. He counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. This grace is given again and again. It's changed your life. It's enabled you to serve, to minister, to care. Can it happen to anyone? Absolutely. It's not just for pastors. And we need this for all. For all. Bethel will only be as strong if there are others. If not, it will remain the size. And no more. Why? Not because the Lord's word is not preached. It is. Not because we're not doing our part. It is. Because there is an others. Physically, you cannot do this on your own. There are others. The church grew significantly in the New Testament because of the others, like Tychicus, like Timothy, like Titus, like Phoebe, like the women folks who took up their faith seriously. Okay, there's not just the men folks, they were the ladies that took their faith seriously and strengthened the church. They really are pillars. Okay, and so I, I conclude on this though, is we read Ephesians, don't just read it as another book. If you read it, you can read it very fast. But if you study it like this, it will change your life. It will change the way you think. It will change the way you see things. It will change the very way you live your life. And if it doesn't, then you have read in vain. The Lord's Word was never meant to be just read like just another textbook. Read that it may create life with us. Okay, well, let's pray together. Our Father, we pray that as we conclude this book, Lord, help us to be so conscious that it is your spirit that speaks to the church, to individual. Let those who have ears to hear, let them hear. Let it be words of rebuke, words of correction, words of admonishment, but words that must turn us back to the Lord himself. We pray that we will begin our 24th year on a note of strength and a note of faith and a note of belief that all things are truly possible to those who believe. Lord, help us to have a greater, deeper, stronger faith. Be committed to this course. Change our very life our heart, our mind, our spirit. We ask that you would grant this, that, you, that Bethel will become even stronger, that it would shine even brighter for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. We ask that you would bless in Jesus' name.